Hey what's going on gang, welcome to your 12th Python 3 tutorial and in this video I want to talk about functions. Okay then, so now we know the basics of data types and control flow, what I want to do is crank this up a notch and go through something which I think is a little bit more exciting, functions. So what do functions allow us to do? Well they basically allow us to create a block of code which can be used and called upon whenever we need it later on in our code. So I think the best way to demonstrate this would be to go through a couple of examples. So we're going to jump straight in and create our first function. Now to create a function in Python, what you need to do first of all is say def, and that stands for define. Then we give our function a name. I'm going to call this one greet because I'm super original. Then we follow it up with a set of parentheses. Then our colon, then underneath indented is going to be our code block. So what do we want to do when this function is called? For now, I'm going to keep this really simple and I'm just going to print something out to the console and we're going to print out hello world. Surprise, surprise. OK, so now we need to call this function if we want to invoke its functionality. The way we do that is by saying greet the function name and then add it on parentheses at the end. These parentheses say we want to invoke that function. So if we save it now and run the file, it's called functions.py. We see hello world printed out to the console. And the cool thing is now that we've defined this function, we can call upon it as many times as we want. So if I truly wanted to, I could print this out as many times as I wanted to. So we get it five times now. Awesome. All right. So that's well and good. But what if I want to maybe pass some data into the function? Well, I can do that. So I'm going to get rid of these dudes and I'll get rid of this print statement as well. Now, if we wanted to pass data into the function, we can specify the data or the parameters that we want to pass through into the function are right here. So say I want to pass through a name and also the time of day. Well, I'm going to specify a parameter called name and also a time parameter. Now we can have as many parameters in here as you want. You can have a third, a fourth, etc. Let's just keep it simple for now and have two parameters. So these parameters are basically variables which we pass into the function when we call it, which we can then access within this function. So now if I wanted to, I could output something to the console using print and I could use a formatted string and output these variables. So first of all, name and then time. But I mean, this makes no sense just to output the variable. So instead, what we'll do is we'll say good time name. And basically, that means if they pass in a variable for time, which is like morning and a name, which is Sean, it'll say good morning, Sean. And then we'll say, hope you are well. OK, so now we have our greet function and we can call it down here and pass in these two parameters. So the name is going to be Sean and the time is going to be morning. So let's save that and run it again. Now we get good morning, Sean. Hope you are well. So we've substituted in these variables into the string so we can output them. We've accessed these parameters that we've passed in when we called it. Awesome, right? OK, let's make this a little more interactive. I'm going to ask the user for their name and a time of day. So name variable is equal to input. And then we're going to ask the user enter your name. And then underneath that time is going to be equal to input. Enter the time of day. And then we're going to pass these two variables that they're stored in name and time in here, name and time. So, by the way, these two variables here don't need to be called the same as these things. I could have called this X and Y and passed in X and Y here. The only thing that matters is the order. We have to pass in a name first, then the time, because that's the order we've defined here in the function. So we're passing these two variables into this function. So whatever the user inputs is going to get output right here. So let's run it and find out. Enter your name, Sean, enter a time of day, night. So good night, Sean. Hope you are well. Perfect. So we've created now this function, which is a bit more interactive, if you like. But I want to show you something. What happens if we don't pass in any parameters, even though we're expecting some right here? Well, I'm going to save this. I'll clear the console and run the file again. Enter your name, Sean, uh, time of day, night. And we get an error because we're calling this function greet, but we're not passing anything in. And it says right here, greet is missing two required positional arguments, name and time. So we have to pass those in. I'm going to comment these out for a minute because we're not going to use those yet. And what I want to do now is show you how you can get around this error. So we can use what's known as default parameters. So in case the user or whoever is calling this function does not pass in 
any variables, any parameters, a name and a time, we can set these to be a default parameter just for that instance. So we'll set this equal to, first of all, a name, we'll say Ryu, and then the time can be morning. So I'll save this again and run again. And this time we get good morning Ryu, hope you're well. So even though we're calling this function without passing through any parameters, it's still running perfectly using these parameters as the defaults. So that's how we get around that. So if we do pass anything in here, for example, Sean and afternoon, these will overwrite these things. And we can see that if we run the file. So we get Sean and afternoon. So when we pass stuff through, it overrides them. Otherwise, it defaults to these things. Now, what if we want to just pass one thing through? Well, we could say name equals Sean. And we're saying here we're passing through the name, but we're not passing through the time. And the name is equal to Sean. So if I save that and run it again, then we get good morning, Sean. Hope you're well. So it's defaulting to morning, but Sean is replacing the name. Awesome. So there's a couple of basic examples. Now, I want to go through something which maybe is a little more practical. Now, I want to create a function which is going to calculate the area of a circle. So let's define this function first of all. We'll define it and call it area and set that to calculate the area. So how do you calculate the area of a circle? Well, it's just going to be pi r squared. So 3.142 times radius times radius. Now, obviously, what we need to do is pass this radius into this function as a parameter because we're going to need it to calculate it right here. Now, what we could do is print this like so. And it's going to print that calculation. So now let's call it. We'll call area. And we're going to pass in a radius of 5. So let's clear the console again and run this functions.py file. Now we get the area of the circle output to the console, 78.55. So this is working. Cool. Again, what if we want to give the user some interactivity? We'll ask for the radius. So we'll say radius equals input. And then inside here, we'll say enter a radius. Cannot type at the minute. All right, save that. And now what we want to do is turn this into an integer because when a user inputs something and it's stored in a variable, remember it's stored as a string. And we're working with numbers here. We want to perform some calculations. So we're going to turn this into an integer like so. And then we're going to call the area function again, but this time pass in the radius that the user entered. So let's run this enter a radius 5 and we still get that 78.55 awesome okay so now what if I want to also calculate the volume and let's just say we have the circle which we've calculated the area we want to calculate the volume of a cylinder now the equation for that is the area of the circle times the length of the cylinder so again let's just ask the user for the length first of all so we'll say length is equal to int we need to typecast this again input and then enter a length okay so let's save that now and define our volume function so we'll say def vol for volume and that's going to take in an area and it's also going to take in a length because it needs to multiply the area by the length so down here what we're going to do is print area times length. Okay, so now we have our volume function set up and we also have our area function set up. Now, how is this gonna work? Well, first of all, what we're doing is we're working out the area. Now, all that's doing is printing to the console, but really what we want to do is use that result inside this function because we pass in the area right here. So instead of printing, what we can do is return a value. And the way we return a value is by using the return keyword. And then this now will be returned. OK, so when we call this function, we're returning the result of this. So really what we want to do is store that return. We want to store it in a variable. I'm going to call it area equals or rather area calc is equal to the area function. OK, so now we have this calculation of the area. So we can call the volume function. We can say vol and then pass in the area. So that's area calc and also we want to pass in the length which the user inputs so we'll copy that dude and paste it in there as well so let's run this so far and hope that it works so we'll say a radius of seven also a length of eight 
and now we get this back for the volume awesome so this is working now I want to show you one more thing we can pass functions into functions as a parameter if you like so for example instead of storing this in a variable and passing it in here what I could do is instead just place this directly in here like this and we can delete that then we're eliminating a little bit of code and this is still going to do exactly the same thing and I'll prove that so functions.py enter a radius 7 again and 8 and now we still get the same result all right so there we go guys that is your introduction to functions we're going to be using them heavily as we go along so don't worry if you don't understand them 100% just yet we are going to be using them much much more